Hello and welcome back to my podcast. I am so sorry it's been so long since I last did a podcast, um, but I have been super, super busy. As you will have seen from my YouTube channel, I've been to Fiber East. I've also been away for a long weekend with my husband um, and we've had family arriving from Australia to stay with us for the summer holidays. Obviously, we're now into coming into week three three is it of the summer holidays um, and I'm still here I'm alive I've survived um, I'm so pleased so welcome back for those of you who are new to my podcast uh, this is where I talk about my knitting and crocheting journey I do have other videos that I post on my YouTube about my sewing and my dressmaking and various things like fabric hauls and little out and about trips but this podcast is dedicated solely to knitting and crochet Thank you to everybody who has been watching from the onset or has joined us recently. The subscribers are going up and up and up each week and I do really like to see that number rising. So thank you to everybody um, who's been watching and supporting me along the way. Uh, lots of comments coming in from you as well. Uh, so thank you to everybody who's been involved. If you're looking for me on social media, you can find me on Facebook. We are Craft Classes at Beautiful Things. On Instagram, I am Artifarty Mac, and on Twitter, I am just Claire Macaness. So that's me, Claire, owner of Beautiful Things Craft Studio in Brentwood, Essex, where we teach all sorts of craft and sewing classes. So I'm going to start um, with oh, what's on my needles. Uh, so for those of you who have been watching the podcast for a while, you'll know I've just been dabbling with making socks. And I decided that I was going to start the Winwick Mum sock pattern using my Little Boo Yarns Beautiful Things colourway. So this was hand dyed especially for me by Debs at Little Boo Yarns. It is a sparkly sock weight yarn and I've been using it to knit my Winwick Mum's sock. Now I started probably about... Three weeks ago, uh, it would have been at the beginning of the summer holidays, I went away for a weekend with my mum and dad to a haven campsite with the children and I'd just cast on my sock then and I finished it probably about a week and a half ago. So here's my first sock. So I'm really, really pleased with it. It fits really nicely. Um, it's got um, a traditional heel flap, but it's done with this kind of rib stitch. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see this up close. I'll try and get the camera to focus in. There we go. There we go. Um, and it gives a really nice ribby effect. Um, and it's really simple to do. You just knit one and slip one for an entire row. And then the second row back is just purling all the way back. And it gives this nice rib effect. Um, I know lots of you have tried the Winwick Mum sock pattern before, so I was really pleased with how that went. Now that one I made, first of all I cast onto my higher, higher sharps, my 9 inch higher, higher sharps. Uh, but they really are sharp. And where you have to keep passing the yarn round and round and round the circulars, I was getting a really sore finger. Um, because they are so sharp. So I stopped using those halfway through and um, when I was at Fiber East I bought myself some Addy uh, circular needles and these are much nicer. They're a little bit longer than the higher higher sharps and the actual metal part is almost twice as long as the higher higher sharps and they're not blunt by any means but they don't hurt your finger quite so much. So I use those to knit my first sock along with my standard Knit Pro uh, Symphony DPNs. So I was pleased with that. There's nothing about it I didn't like. I did finally graft my toes successfully. Um, I will put a link in the comments below, but I used a, another YouTube tutorial for grafting my toe that I found really, really good. Um, and it's um, specifically to stop the little... Um, corner that you sometimes get, the little corner bump here, which I'd got before with my last pair of socks. So I'll put a link in the comments below to that uh, video tutorial, but it was a really good grafting tutorial and I've got a really neat graft that I'm really pleased with. You can, you actually, you can't see the join at all, it's almost invisible, so I'm dead chuffed with that. 
So when I cast on my second sock, I'm determined that each time I do socks, I'm going to progress a little bit and I'm going to learn something new. So I decided that rather than use my small circulars, I was going to try and master magic loop. Now, ultimately, I want to do two socks at a time magic loop, but I'm not quite ready for that yet. I have watched um, Mina from the Knitting Expat. I've watched her tutorial on how to do it and it looks easy enough for the naked eye but whether I can actually do it I don't know. So I've cast on my second sock and I did do that um, magic loop method. Now at the moment you won't believe me because I've just finished knitting my heel flap so obviously my heel flaps um, on a DPN at the moment but you can see hanging out the bottom of my sock here is my big cable so I have knit all of the circular part magic loop. I'm really pleased with it, it's so much easier, you're not constantly shoving the yarn around the needles. I have had a bit of a hiccup when I was doing the rib, um, I think I was about six rows in and I'd got it right, I'd cast it on right, I was really pleased, um, but about six rows in you do get a really big gap and I think I just wasn't paying attention, I'd picked it up and started doing it when I was in the middle of a conversation with someone, which is never a good idea. And uh, so there is a big loopy bit of a hole there, but I decided to leave it because it sorted itself out a few rows in. Um, there's absolutely no sign of laddering or anything the whole way around the main part of the sock. You actually couldn't tell uh, where the needles changed from one needle to the other. So um, Mina, thank you for that tutorial because it does look like you're going to get big scary holes and you keep saying in your tutorial don't worry about it it will sort itself out and it really does um, so have faith in Mina she knows what she's talking about so I'm really really pleased with that obviously we're not quite there yet um, I finished my heel flap last night and I decided not to go on to the shaping that's something again I need another sort of hour to myself so that I can concentrate on that so I'm pleased with my Winwick Mum socks and there are a couple others of you who are joining in with me. If you follow me on Ravelry, I have got a group on Ravelry, the Beautiful Things group, um, and you'll see some other people that are taking part in making the Winwick Mum sock at the same time as me. So Viv is um, taking part as well. She's made a gorgeous purple and green sock um, and she's just made a start on her second sock. And my mum, Christine, she's also making a purpley coloured sock. She's finished her first sock, although she's going to have to unpick her toe because she's grafted it wonky, um, which is a bit of a shame for her. But she's just about to cast on her second sock too. So we're enjoying that. Um, I'm looking forward to casting on my next pair of socks. I'm going to use the self-striping yarn that I picked up at Fibre East from the Knitting Swede. I'm looking for a pattern so that I can do a heel slightly differently with those socks. I like the look of the Fish Lips Kiss Heel and I have downloaded the pattern from Ravelry but when I was reading through it, it's pages and pages and pages and pages of information and it just didn't seem to compute. Um, I think I maybe need to look and read it again with a bit of a clear head but I'm wondering if I might be venturing in too deep to try that straight away but I do like the idea of just knitting the heel rather than having to pick up all those stitches around the outside edge uh, which I'm currently doing at the moment so if you've got any suggestions for a, a nice easy shaped heel and not an afterthought heel either I don't like the idea of those um, that works really nicely with a self striping yarn and again just I still want to go for another plain vanilla sock for now uh, then please do hit me with your suggestions below. So that's my little sock journey. Uh, the other thing I cast on um, the day after Fibre East was my Louisa Harding jumper. Uh, if you've watched my Fibre East video, you will have seen that. But this is, I'm not sure how you say it, but it's the Talisin jumper. So let's see if I can get that to uh, focus in for you. There we go. So you can see it's a really beautiful stripy jumper. It's um, made with a combination of just knit and pearl rows so that you get a raised ridge uh, all the way round. And the yarn is self-striping and it actually knits up beautifully. I've got quite a good way into the front of my 
jumper so far and you can see there um, how it knits up you've got all those lovely raised bumps you can see this is literally it goes from the turquoise to the purple to the pale mossy green dark green and then back again so it's a really nice um, color change and I would imagine I've still probably got I don't know about a third of a ball left to go so I would think it's probably going to go back to a sagey green color before I need to cast on the next ball and the instructions on the pattern do say it says um, when you're starting and selecting balls for the project look for balls which start with the same colour so that you can get a similar gradiating effect on each sleeve um, and um, jumper back to avoid any strong colour striping once you've completed your first ball of yarn ensure the next ball that you start starts with a similar colour to the one just finished um, which makes perfect sense so I've got five balls in total so I've just got to hope that I haven't got to pick through too many of them to uh, find one that starts with the colour that I've just ended with but we'll see how I get on with that this is going to take me some time I'm halfway through the front I need to knit that again then I've got sleeves um, and I don't really get very much of a chance to do my knitting so this is probably going to be on what's on my needles for the next few months worth of podcasts uh, but that's my big project and I like to have um, a few projects on the go at any one time. So the yarn that I'm using for that is Louisa Harding yarns. Um, it's Amatola. So there we go. You can see that. Camera's playing ball today. Um, the Amatola yarn is um, a hand wash only yarn. And um, it doesn't have colours as in words as such as colours by numbers. This is colour 122. Two. So Viv also bought um, the same yarn kit as I did at Fibre East to knit the jumper, cast it on and then sadly um, realised it didn't go up to her size. So in all the excitement of Fibre East we didn't think to look at the pattern um, but she has cast on a different cardigan instead with it that looks really really lovely and again it's, it's beautifully um, colour changing. So if you pop over to our Ravelry group I'm sure she'll post in there with her progress of how she's getting on so you can have a look um, alternatively we also have a facebook um, group which is called beautiful things crafty corner and it's designed for people who come on our classes or people who follow us on youtube to just chat about the things that we're making the things we're doing to ask for advice tips and help um, or just to show off what you're working on really it's just a nice crafty community um, so feel free uh, to pop over there because I know Viv has posted some pictures of her jumper on there. So that's all that's on my needles at the moment. You might wonder where my hitchhiker shawl has gone. Well, it's been parked. I haven't got a problem with it, but I wasn't enjoying it. I wasn't loving it. And I do firmly think you need to love something to be able to carry on with it. It's not that I don't love it as a project and it's not that I don't love the colours, but because I started it very, very early on in my knitting journey, there are a few holes in it and a few mistakes um, and they were bothering me and I wasn't able to pull them back and fix them. So because they were bothering me, I have gave it to Viv and Viv's unpicked it all for me and she's knitted it back to where I'd got to. Uh, so they're all nice and it's ready to go again, but I just think I need to park it for a little while and then when I'm feeling the love, I'll pick it back up again and carry on with it. And I'll find it fine now, I know I will. Um, it really is an easy pattern, but those holes were bothering me um, and I wasn't able to just say to myself, oh Claire, it doesn't matter, you were new to knitting when you started it. I knew that I'd always know they were there. Um, I'm a bit like that with things, I can't stand um, little flaws, even in the clothes and things that I make. I know if I've sewed an arm in a little bit incorrectly or if the zip's a bit wonky and it really bothers me. So that's been parked for a while. So it's not been forgotten. Uh, it's just having a little rest in its project bag. So that's what's on my needles. Um, I have a couple of stash enhancements for you. Nothing major um, because obviously I've got all my yarn at Fibre East so I have to be good. Um, but this yarn I bought recently on my trip to London I went and visited Loop of London and I will put a video up shortly of my trip um, and I'll show you round Loop as well as taking you around Sew Over It and Ray Stitch as well which are both really nearby to Loop London. So this was a sock yarn, it 
it's a hand painted sock yarn and it's by Misty Alpaca and the um, colour is HS21 it is really really soft now this isn't my normal kind of colours at all I normally go for rainbows or brights but as you can see this is like a tealy green turquoisey blue and it's got some orange and purple and navy blue running through it but they were so pretty, there was a huge pile of these yarns and I really couldn't decide which one I wanted and I had three in my hands, this included, at, at one time and I just couldn't decide. And so there was a little girl in the shop at the time and um, with her mum and this little girl looked thoroughly bored while her mum was looking through um, various yarns. So I asked her which one was her favourite and this was the one that she picked. So I figured I couldn't decide, so I'd let her decide for me. So I asked her her name, and her name was Eleanor. So these are going to be my Eleanor socks. So Eleanor, if you happen to be watching, thank you for choosing my socks. I'm going to really enjoy making them, but I think it will be some time before they're cast on because there's a couple ahead of them in the queue. So this is just a stash acquisition for now. The other thing that I was given this week, again by Viv, you're featuring heavily today, Viv, aren't you? Um, was this Women's Institute Soft and Silky Yarn. It's really, really pretty. It's exclusive to Hobbycraft. Now, I don't like Hobbycraft as a shop normally, um, but they're very cunning and they do have some exclusives. It's a four-ply and it is 100% microfiber acrylic, but it's really beautifully soft. And I don't see why you can't make socks with it. Hold on a minute, that's the phone. Sorry about that. So, what was I saying? So yes, this um, Women's Institute Soft and Silky um, Merino Yarn. I'm not sure that it's necessarily designed for socks, but it is four ply. Um, there's 100 grams here, so I can make some socks with that. I think they'd be ever so soft, really nice. Um, but there might be a small shawl pattern or something else. So again, it's just a stash acquisition. Um, it was a lovely gift, so I shall put it to one side um, until I've worked my way through my projects, my planned projects, and we'll see what comes of that. So you might see something Christmas time, or who knows. I'll pop that to one side. So I have now got to talk to you about what's on my hook. So I have been busy crocheting, we've had lots of lessons this week, we've had another batch of beginners and another batch of intermediate crocheters learning this week, um, but we've also had our poncho along ladies in to do part two of their poncho. So the poncho along is a class that runs over three months and we're working on the simply crochet cow necked poncho that I made last year. Um, I've put links to it on our Ravelry page um, and there's a chat thread on there for that. And so we were starting to add the stripy part to our poncho. We'd finished the cow neck uh, the other week and we'd started to add our stripes. So as you can see, I'm nearly there. There's 18 colour repeats in total needed to get this done and I think without counting it, I think I've got about three or four left to go. So you can see I will uh, quickly pop that on for you and you can see it's really coming together nicely. So this is with the Stylecraft Aran weight. Um, and it's beautifully, beautifully soft. It's really lovely to make a poncho on. It's warm, but it's light enough. The chunky that I used previously is really just a little bit too heavy. Uh, so I do really like this. This is a gift um, for somebody, but I know they won't watch this podcast, so I'm safe um, with them not seeing what I'm doing. So we've got another class in about two weeks time where we'll be adding the bottom ribbing and the fringing. So I'll keep you posted on how that's getting on. But that's the only thing that's actually on my hook at the moment. So the only last thing really to talk to you about, it's a fairly quick podcast today, is to talk about our new course that we've launched. So those of you that have watched for a while will know that we run semi-virtual online courses for crochet. So you can watch along with our professionally filmed video, so that's me um, as your teacher, and you're filmed, um, I'm filmed face on like I am here, but I'm also filmed from above. And they're professionally filmed by a fantastic camera crew so you get some really good close-up 
um, images of the crochet. And we have a beginner's course at the moment, uh, which is available to purchase. And this week we launched our intermediate course. So when you purchase the course, you get sent one of these lovely bags. These are canvas bags with beautiful things and our flowers on the front. The lovely thing about them is they've got um, a magnetic enclosure here in the back. And this is a full size pocket. So it's perfect to put your knitting patterns or your crochet patterns in um, as well. So inside the bag you get your kit. And for this particular course, you get one of our hooky postcards, which is full of our crochet terminology. You get um, a four millimeter clover crochet hook, and you get three balls of Stylecraft double knit yarn. And all of that comes inside your bag. Once you have access to the course, then you can go onto our website and download the PDF instruction pack, which is packed full of patterns, instructions, and lots of really nice clear photography um, of all of the different things that you're gonna be making. Now the intermediate course is aimed at people who can already do the basic stitches, but want to learn how to follow a pattern and want to really neaten up their crochet work. So we focus on changing colors, crocheting neatly in circles, um, tidying up the middle of our circles so they close nicely, and following patterns and during it you'll make a three color change circle you'll do um, a sampler for a granny stripe and you'll go on to learn a color changing granny square and also a continuous color granny square um, with some really nice neat top tips and techniques so if you're looking to polish up your crochet skills or just to learn to read a pattern and then that's the course for you now the course is 35 pounds and at the moment um, we are doing a special offer and I will run a code along the bottom which you can use that will get you five pounds off our intermediate crochet course and as soon as you've signed up via the website and paid for it we will send you out your kit and you will have immediate access to those online files and the videos um, we've got a massive group of people behind us who are all doing our courses at the moment. We've got a hashtag on all the social media channels. We've got a group going on Facebook um, and there's so much buzz and we've had some fantastic people post on social media. We've had unboxing videos and all sorts of things. Um, so I'm really pleased with the way the course has launched. Um, you can find our online courses at www.semivirtualcourses.com. So the beginners is on there and so is the intermediate. And that code that I gave you uh, will give you five pounds off either of those courses. Um, and it's valid um, indefinitely at the moment, I think. I haven't, uh, haven't cancelled it, so jump on and use that code to get five pounds off our courses. So that's all I've really got to tell you today. I will obviously carry on with my sock and carry on with my jumper. Um, if I finish my sock, I might cast on another one. Uh, we'll see how I go but I will only come back to you with another podcast when I've actually got something to show you and talk about so I don't do a weekly podcast I just simply don't have enough time um, to sit down and, and crack on with enough otherwise I'll just be waffling nonsense at you every week so I'll come back to you probably in two to three weeks I would imagine when I've got something else to show you in the meantime I'll try and keep my YouTube channel active with some makes videos and some fabric hauls and a few out and about trips uh, so I will say bye for now and catch up with you on social media take care and thanks for watching bye bye